But if I have to choose students to come to me, to work with us for six months or four months, I always prefer to take students who fail and who don't want to work. They have more creativity, they are more innovative, and they are more fun. The people who study a lot, they are very little fun, I think, I believe. I even said it to my children. If school needs you to do it in four years, do it in six. Like, like this, we have more time. And it's better to do it slowly. My wife never agreed with that, but, uh, <laughs> but I didn't. So I said, how can I work without working? And a friend of mine one day had this watch on his wrist. This, the name of this guy was Jacques Piguet. And Jacques Piguet was the son of Frédéric Piguet, the number one movement maker from the 20th century. He sold the company in 1992 to Swansea. But till 1992, he was leader in mechanical movements. Frédéric Piguet is the name of the movement factory. Mm. Frédéric Piguet. And I saw the watch on his wrist. And I said, when I looked at the, at the watch, I said, God! That's a steam machine. Because as a kid, a boy, I love to work, to play with steam machines. And when I, when you look at caliber 40, 71 P, 71 PG, the 71 PG really looks like a machine, like the watch I wear a little bit. And I found that watch phenomenal. Because it was the first time in my life I saw a watch with no tire. You know, 1974, I saw a watch with no tire. And I started to like the watch, I talked with Jacques, and one day he tells me, you know what, if you're looking for a job, go to the watch industry. I said, oh, sorry, I have studied economics, what do I understand about watches? He said to me, that doesn't matter, you can, I am sure you find a, a, a way, send some curriculum, send some uh, information. Then he said, oh, but in three weeks, my father, Frédéric Piguet, will be 70 years old. And the whole watch industry will be there. Mr. Philip Stern from Patek, Mr. Gole from AP, they will all come to my father's birthday because my father is the big boss in the movements. So I was invited to the 70th anniversary of uh, Mr. Frédéric Piguet. Jacques, his son, introduced me to some of the bosses. And I always said in a nice way, ah, ah bravo, ah, you are Mr. Gole from Mona Piguet, wonderful. You know, I would like to work one day in the watch industry. And this guy told me, if you want a job, Monday come to my office. And that is how I started. Then, then, he said to me, okay, young man, we do following with you. You will have, during one year, no office. One year, no telephone line. One year, no uh, name card. One year, no phone. One year, no traveling. One year, no work. One year, no secretary and one year half salary. He said, what will I do? <laughs> he said, you will learn what it means, the watch tradition and the watch making art. And once you understand the art, once you understand the history, once you understand the culture, once you understand the people, once you understand the, the region where you live, then after one year, you will start selling. But before, you must learn, and because you have to learn, you cost me money, and I give you half salary. So for one year, I had nothing else to do than to sit. First next, the production manager during two months. He was talking, I never understood, because you know, all these technical things. Then I sit in the next to another one, and during one year. As I was living in the same village, Le Brassou, I started to ski with the watchmakers, I started to play football and so on, and I became a friend of the people. Mm -hmm. So I knew, I started to understand what the people's mentality were. Why can these people stay hours like this? 
I know why. I understood why they were all making cheese. Why do I offer cheese every year for Christmas? Why do I make cheese myself? Because that belongs to the watchmaking art. All the watchmakers from the valley, where we come from, they all have started to make cheese in 1650, before they were touching watches. So I understood the whole thing. And my steam machine on the wrist became my passion. And once you have a passion, you don't work. Finish. No work. You hate weekend. Because if you cannot go to the factory on a Saturday, Sunday, it's, it's tragedy. Because you stay at home and the factory is missing. I was living 300 meters in front of the factory. So every Saturday, every Sunday, I go to factory. Because it's only 200 meters. <coughs> So sometimes my wife has something to do and I say, I go quickly to factory. So you need, you need your job because your job is your passion. Mm -hmm. And when your job is your passion, no work. No need of holiday, no need weekend, only need work, 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 work. And that is how I started. And that is why I am now 65. And that is why now I am still motivated. That is why I work now every day from 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning till 6 in the evening. Wow. That is why I am still here. That is why I still enjoy. That is why I love talking to you. Because it is my passion, my job. If it would be my job, I would be 65, I'm a millionaire, I would stop working. But it's not my job. So I cannot stop. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes my wife said, what a pity, if it would be your job, you would be retired. How pleasant it would be. <laughs> You cannot retire from a passion. Mm. You cannot. It's impossible. It doesn't exist. Retirement from a passion doesn't exist. So, the question is, why did I do Hublot? Because, first reason, I'm passionate about watches. But, where was my passion? My passion was in the past. Because I have learned the past. And when you are a young man, you enter yesterday. And yesterday is so beautiful. You discover all oh, yesterday. And yesterday is so rich. And the tradition is so enormous. So fascinating. I was fascinated by yesterday. And because I was fascinated by yesterday, the first act as an entrepreneur was to bring back Blanc. I bought Blanc uh, in, uh, in Singapore dollar for 26 thousand Singapore dollar I bought Plopa on the 11th of November 1981. 26,000. Why 26,000 dollar? Because Plopa was not existing anymore. No factory, no plant, no, no workers, no bench, no catalog, no collection, no contract, no distribution, no nothing. The brand had stopped to exist in 1959. So when you buy a brand that has stopped to exist in 1959 and you are in 1981, that's 22 years. A brand closed, shut down, 22 long years, it's finished. Nobody remember. Mm -hmm. So I could buy Blancpain for free, for 26,000. And I bought Blancpain with my friend Piguet. Jacques Piguet, the man who made me look at the watch in a different way. The man who told me, Look at the watch like you look an engine. Don't look a watch with a dial. You must look the engine. It's like a Ferrari. You look the engine. So, I bought Blancpain, 1981. And the first thing I wanted to remake is to remake tradition. To come back with all the beauties of yesterday. And we made Blancpain a traditional watch. Round, very classical, very understated, with very thin movements, ultra slim, and all the complications. That was my first act. I could repeat the past by myself with the name Blanc. Act number two. When success is on the door, the miss success 
is also next to him. Two people knock at the door at the same moment. Dum, dum, dum. You open the door and you see Mr. Success. And you say, hello, Mr. Success, come in. But behind him is Mr. Failure. And Mr. Failure also enters in your house. And suddenly you have two visitors in your house. You have Mr. Success, who is always nice to you. Ah, he dances around you. And you have Mr. Failure. And Mr. Failure is dangerous because you don't see him, because he's very discreet. And Mr. Failure brought me in 1989, uh, 1989 to my divorce. My wife left. <clears throat> she stopped to love me for any reason, probably the good reasons, but I was naive and she left. When she left, I said, my passion is gone because my love is gone. No love, no life. And I had a depression. And in 1992, she asked the divorce. And in 1992, I said, I sell the whole shit. Because of this stupid blunder, I ruined my private life. That was my thinking, my belief. So I sold the company. Go! Thanks God I sold it to Swatch Group. And thanks God Swatch Group was Mr. Hayek. And thanks God Mr. Hayek said, Mr. Bean, now you will work. Now you have cashed 60 million Swiss francs, now you're going to start to work. Because if you don't work, you will, rule, you will ruin your life. You have no love, because I understand your life has gone, uh, your wife has gone, but now you need back your passion. And you're gonna help me to restructure Omega. And I will give you board member of Swatch Group, and you are big boss of Omega. And you will command Omega. You will do new marketing, you will do new product, and you will develop. And I took Omega and I developed Omega in China from 1993 till 2000. I was head of Omega. Officially, only board member. But as board member, I was choosing the president, the marketing director, and with Hayek, making, the, putting the right people, the right strategy. And I forgot my disaster. And 10 years later, I could marry a second time. So I married the second woman 10 years later. And in 2000, I have a baby. And in 2000, I'm 51 years old. <laughs> and 51 years, you have no baby. 51 years, you have grandchildren too, not a young baby. So I say to my second wife, this young baby must have the same life as my first babies. I want to be an entrepreneur again. I will quit Swatru. No, don't do that. Oh, it's great that you have a good job. So I stay one, two, three years, and in 2003 I say, no, I leave. And in 2003 I leave. I leave to go where? No, I don't know. But I leave. But you don't have a job. I said to my wife, I don't care. Let me first leave, a new job will come. A new job cannot come if I don't leave. <laughs> you must first leave. And then things will come. I leave, and in March or April 2004, I hear about Hublot. I don't like Hublot. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wear. For me, it is the worst. I cannot wear. It is quartz, it is rubber, <sighs> horrible. Because I don't like it because they have an incredible concept nevertheless rubber i believe can i not transform hublot so that i like how can i transform hublot so that i like and i have one idea together with the idea of hublot and what is this idea it is that i collect watches but i collect watches of tradition I take 
the AP, some <coughs> mushrooms, some got a lot of pate, blanca of course. And I can never wear these washes. Because, you know, I cannot let them fall down, I can do nothing, I must always be careful. I, I cannot swim. I can so I say, can I can I can I use Hublot to make a wearable blanc pain, to make a wearable patek, a patek where you could really do anything, can never scratch and so on. And that is the idea. And when I ask the question to myself, I immediately find the answer. I say, but, but that's exactly what Hublot should be. Hublot has rubber. Hublot has rubber and steel, or rubber and gold. And Hublot has the portal design. And in this portal design, we put a mechanical watch, a mechanical movement, a mechanical movement that I can wear when I swim, when I cycle, when I ski, every day. And I want a tubio for my wrist, not a tubio for my safe. And I developed this watch in 2005. This is the first, that is why I wear it every day. This is the watch that has given birth to the new Hublot. This is a chronograph tubio that I wear every day. Can do any sport with it. You can drop it down, whatever. <laughs> and I say, this can be the future. It's the tradition in the box of the future. It's the marriage of tradition and technology. It's the marriage between yesterday and tomorrow. It's fusion. The art of fusion, that is Biblo. That is how I'm going to transform the brand. And in June 2005, we launched this watch. And I call it Big Bang. I call it Big Bang because it's the start of life starts with Big Bang. And Big Bang is a huge explosion. It's a fusion. And the Big Bang, the whole thing explodes. And I want, with Hublot, to make the same explosion. I want to bring the tradition in a box that can resist any shock any use. That was the idea. And this idea, I found it for me so exciting because it was the only watch that was missing in my collection. For sport, I have Rolexes, Omegas, whatever, Panerai, everything. But do I have a tourbillon with whom where I can throw the watch on the, on the, uh, on the floor? <laughs> do I have a tourbillon where I can swim? Do I have a tourbillon where I cannot scratch? That will be my watch. And that is the Hublot concept. And that is why the name Big Bang. That is why the name Classic Fusion. Because we are fusion. We don't repeat just the past. We take the past and we take the future and we bring those two things together. Jack! Today. And then we create something totally new. Something that many people dislike. Blanc Pain, everybody likes. It's normal so classic and so beautiful. But this, many people dislike. And because they dislike, I'm happy. Because when people dislike, they can only improve and like. It's like students who have only quartz watches, it's great for me. Because it means they can buy mechanical. If everybody likes, this is dangerous. It means you are already too late. <laughs> the future, people never like. People always like the past. Because past is easy to understand. Because easy to look. You look in the mirror, ah, you see the past. The future, no. So that is why I did the move to Hublot. And the move is done in uh, 2005. And Hublot makes 26 million turnover. 26 million. I left Swatch Group. I was board member of the group, board member of Omega, heading Omega, heading Blanca. Omega was doing in that day already 1.4 billion. And suddenly I, stay, I am in a little company, 26 million. I'm nobody. Retailer tell me, oh, you have played football in the Champions League, now you are in the last, 
League. I said, don't worry, we will be the Champions League in a few years. We will bring up this company. And I work, I work, I work, and already nine months later, I can call my people. I call my assistant who worked with me since 79. I said, who went to Blampa, who went to Omega. She is still at Omega. I tell her, you can join me, Blum. I have a job for you for the next 10 years. Then I call Ricardo Guadalupe, who was my CEO at Blampa. I said, Ricardo, I have a job for you at Ublu. I promised 10 years. Then I called Valerie. Valerie is my marketing director at Omega. She joined Omega in 93. I said, Valerie, you will be boss of marketing of Ublu. I can promise 10 years uh, uh, job. And slowly, slowly, all my team joined. And then slowly, slowly, we are a team. And we are the same people who have brought up Blompa. The same people who later have brought up Omega. And these same people now are ready to bring up Ublu. Wow. And then we start. And then in 2006 already, we do 120 million from 26 in one year. Bam! And in 2008, we do 220 million Swiss flag, which is 260 million Singapore dollars. And in 2008, I say, now it's time to buy 100% of the company. And I make an offer. And the owner tells me, yes, Mr. P, I give to my bank what I think I can accept the offer. He talks to UBS in Lugano, which is a city in Switzerland. And UBS told me, oh, but 220 million Swiss franc? and 50 million profit, and no debts, and no mortgage, no leasing, no debt, no loan, totally cash, everything is paid. No, you cannot sell this company for 250 million. You must sell this company minimum half a billion. And the gentleman come back to me and say, if you want majority, is half a billion. They say, no, this I cannot pay. I don't have this much money. And number two, is my job. I took this company of 26 million, now we do 220, four years later, is my job. Why should I pay down so much? If I would have known that I should have worked less quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, okay, we can wait till you believe this is worth so much. And instead of waiting, LVMH knock at the door. And LVMH said, do you do 220 million? Yes. Do you do 49.6 million profit? Yes. You have no debt? No. OK, I pay 10 times profit, 496 million. And LVMH buy in three weeks. And buy my share also. So I sell because I have no other choice. And I cash of course, for the 20% of my shares, and end of Beaver story, but not end of Ublu, because I cannot quit. I cannot quit because I like my people. I have not, I've brought all these people to Ublu. I can now not say to these people, now I sell, I catch my 100 million, bye bye, thank you very much. I cannot. Ublu is my future, Ublu is my passion, Ublu is my vision, Ublu is my soul, Ublu is my love. Cannot leave, quit. So I make agreement with Mr. Arno, Mr. Arno, can you leave freedom to me? Can you leave us work? Can we work like this? Yes. Shake hand, boom. Now, six years have gone. Uh, to eight, to nine, to 10, 11, 12, three years. Six years. And six years, you blow, goes on, develops, same team, same spirit and nothing has changed. But I am not owner anymore. <clears throat> but I am owner of the spirit of the brand. I am owner of the philosophy of the brand. I am owner of the message of the brand. I am owner of the design of the brand. I am owner of the visions of the brand. I am owner of the team of the brand. But I am not the owner of the money. But money I have, I don't need to own more. 
So finally, I have a kind of nice situation where I have given to Ricardo Guadalupe, my faithful CEO, who has been CEO with me since 86, CEO of Blancpain before, I have given him the CEO title in 2011, and I have taken chairman. I am supervising strategy, supervising research and development, supervising uh, uh, marketing, and he executes and he does the daily job, which I don't have to do anymore, uh, more or less. So that's the story. That that was your question, huh? <laughs> <laughs>